Hello class, this is the video for week two where I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. I'm also going to talk about the readings, explain those a little bit, and also get into uh, the assignments for the week. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, I was born and raised in Chicago. Uh, I am in Chicago right now as I'm recording this video. However, I am returning to Memphis next week. Uh, so this video, depending when you're listening to this, might be a total fabrication. Uh, but I will be in Memphis uh, from late January until early March. Given this is an online class, it doesn't really matter where I am. Uh, so that's why I've been spending most of the pandemic in Chicago. My undergraduate degree is in journalism. Uh, I received a master's degree in English composition and rhetoric from uh, a university here in Illinois. I tutored for 12 years at a number of schools part-time. Uh, I adjuncted, uh, that means I taught part-time for two years in Chicago. Uh, then I taught full-time in Xiaoxing, China, in a partnership between the university there and at the University of Indianapolis. Uh, this is currently the fourth year that I'm in Memphis, and I also teach as an adjunct at Christian Brothers uh, University. Uh, so these are some of my favorite sports, movies, television shows, and podcasts. Uh, favorite teams are your Chicago teams, the Bulls, the Bears, the White Sox. I'm not a Cubs fan, just for the record. And the Blackhawks. Uh, movies, original Star Wars trilogy, The Godfather, some of the Marvel movies, and The Dark Knight. Uh, favorite television shows, Mad Men, The Wire, Atlanta, Breaking Bad. First eight seasons of The Simpsons, which probably aired before most of you were born. Uh, and also you can see some of my favorite podcasts as well. Uh, the Rundown. Oh, so there is a great deal to do. Uh, you have four readings from our textbook. Uh, all the, the textbook readings are typically very short, under five pages in most cases, so it shouldn't be too stressful, but you are doing a number of them. Uh, you'll be doing a summary of another reading, uh, and you're going to want to begin considering your literacy narrative. Uh, the other video this week discusses the literacy narrative very specifically, so make sure you watch that uh, if you've not done so. Uh, for the discussion board, you'll want to complete the readings about first-year write composition and its value to college students. Uh, before beginning the literacy narrative, I want you to consider why you are here. Uh, for the journal entry, I want you to write about a literacy sponsor. If you do not know what that is, then you need to look over the summary of Deborah Brandt's reading carefully. Uh, you should look at the handout for the literacy narrative either immediately before or after thinking about the literacy sponsor. Uh, finally, your one-pager will be about what it takes to be a writer. Uh, student writers often have issues with confidence, and these readings should let you realize just how valuable uh, your voice is. So the first reading that you're doing, uh, first-year writing courses are often stereotyped as being about grammar and syntax. This is one of the things that the author talks about. This is often untrue, and research shows that only focusing on this does not help students develop better writing skills. That's something that you learned about last week uh, when you did the reading The Wrong Way to Teach Grammar. Uh, first year writing is often a catch-all for blame about why college students cannot write well, even though there are many, many reasons why students cannot necessarily do that, and it should not all fall on the shoulders of us poor, underpaid first year writing teachers. Uh, first year writing courses can be molded toward being about civics or perhaps uh, the development of rhetorical strategies. Uh, that is very much what this class, as well as English 1020, are about. Uh, the development of rhetorical strategies. And there is a lot of discussion about Memphis as you get into 1020. Uh, these kinds of classes should not only address what is correct, but how language is used in multiple contexts. That is something we will be discussing pretty extensively the next 14 weeks. Uh, so the other, one of the other readings, um, first year composition should be skipped. Uh, many students wonder why they even need to take a first year composition course. And it is, it is generally not tied to their major. Most students are not English majors. Uh, many states and colleges are trying to fast track students through these classes. However, they are missing the crucial benefits uh, that come with this course. Uh, many people can assume they can already write, which is true. Uh, but first year composition can build upon 
crucial skills as you get ready to forward your college careers. Writers benefit from social interaction and seeing other people's approach to language. And the other thing this author talks about is the idea that first-year co composition can unlock different interests and passion in students. Uh, one of the things you always want to do in college is to open up your minds uh, and keep things uh, in perspective. Uh, this sponsors of Literacy Write-Up uh, that I did. So this reading is 20 pages, and what I decided to do is because... I know that there are a lot of there is a lot of reading and there's a lot of writing, and you're kind of trying to scramble to put things together. So what I did is, is I I, I turn it into a one page summary of this reading, um, and I find that this summary is a little bit easier for students to handle. It still gives the essential information about what a literacy sponsor is, uh, but it takes away some of the density. Uh, people become literate by being sponsored by those who already have developed these skills. Reading and writing have become more crucial, but the meaning of literacy has evolved over a number of years. Uh, sponsors can have adverse effects by limiting the way people learn through their own interests. That's something that I think is very interesting, that literacy sponsors can have both a positive but also an adverse effect on the people that they are working with, and it can it can be uh, a little frustrating. Uh, literacy has become less centralized as information has become more widely available because of the internet and because of our, our, our ways of being connected to one another is that the idea of becoming literate has changed and it is less centralized. So two of the other readings that you're doing, uh, again, are from the textbook, one of which is You Need My Credentials uh, to Be a Writer. Uh, this one starts off by discussing the idea of people who believe uh, they can be writers versus those who believe they cannot. Uh, being credentialed is important, but should not prevent people from believing that they can be writers. Even if you are, all are not credentialed, you still have a voice as a student writer. Everyone can write. It's just about how you approach it and how you think about it. Uh, environments can be generated by oneself, even if the external world isn't. So part of what you have to do as writers is to create an environment that you believe can be successful for you and something that you believe will, will help. Uh, the final reading that you are doing from the textbook is writers must develop a strong original voice. And a lot of what this article talks about is the idea of finding voice. And finding your voice as academic writers, it is quite honestly one of the hardest things that you can do. And a lot of students, even after 10-10, do not necessarily have a full handle on it. And that is acceptable. It is okay. I am not expecting every student to have a perfect academic voice when they come out of this class. That is that is very much something that you need to be mindful of and continue to improve upon. But don't feel like you have to have completely mastered this. Okay? So I want to make sure that I have time to go over uh, the assignments for this week. Uh, so in the second uh, discussion board, you will reflect on two readings uh, from the textbook, Bad Ideas About Writing. The questions that you are answering, how do you feel about taking this English 1010 class? Uh, would you want the opportunity to skip it? Uh, consider, considering that you are taking this class now, what do the readings tell you about how you can take advantage of this class? As always when it comes to this, uh, the discussion boards, uh, you are aiming for your initial post uh, to be about 200 to 250 words. Okay? So your initial post is going to be due by Tuesday, as is typical. Tuesday, January the 26th at 10 p.m., and then your two response posts of 100 to 150 words, those are due by Sunday, January the 31st at 10 p.m. Uh, so I want you all to get into a rhythm with these assignments, so I try to keep the due dates um, the same. There are some adaptations that are going to come because of the peer reviews and the wellness breaks, but for the most part, the discussion boards will be due, that initial post due on Tuesday, and those two response posts uh, due by Sunday. The week two journal entry, so you first need to read that summary of Deborah Brandt's article, Sponsors of Literacy. Uh, this journal 
uh, you will write. This week is fairly simple but crucial. As this, uh, you're already going to start brainstorming for the first major assignment, the literacy narrative. Uh, so uh, you can already see the video and check out the um, uh, the assignment sheet attached to this. So write about three quarters of a page about one sponsor. Do not write about more than one. You are writing about one literacy sponsor. If you write about two or three or five, you're going to lose a lot of points. Make sure that you write about one specific literacy sponsor. All right, these are the questions that I want you to answer about this person. How did this person help you develop your literacy skills? What did you learn? Did this person have a net positive or net negative effect? Because remember, sponsors can have adverse effects. Try and be as specific as possible so I understand how this experience helped you. I'm not so concerned about sentence structure and grammar, but about the content. I want to see that you are thinking about this prompt. The journal entry must be uploaded by Thursday, January the 28th at 10 p.m. Finally, the one pager for the week is in response to the two readings. You need my credentials to be a writer, and writers must develop a strong voice. Number one, the first question to answer, do you consider yourself to be a writer? Why or why not? Uh, what kind of writing activities do you complete on a daily basis outside of class? In You Need My Credentials to Be a Writer, Brooks talks about creating a supportive writing environment and getting to the actual writing. Identify some of these beliefs and why they might make for a successful English class. So it's reflecting on this reading in particular in the second question. Explain how the concept of voice, as discussed by Thomas in Writers Must Develop a Strong Original Voice, is a myth, and how literacy narratives themselves are an example of continual integration of knowledge and a way of making sense of the world. So, again, an opportunity for you to think about these two readings. Uh, your one-pagers should be at least a page, no longer than two. Uh, I would say to make this three paragraphs, because there are three questions I would really focus on just answering these three questions in three different paragraphs. And the one-pagers will always be due at the end of the week, so the one-pager should be posted into the appropriate Dropbox by Sunday, January the 31st at 10 p.m. So that is how you will end this first month of 2021. As always, if something in this video does not make sense, or if you are having trouble with any of the assignments, please let me know. Please email or text me as soon as possible. Otherwise, I wish you luck with week two and hope you have a good, solid, healthy uh, continuation of the semester. Uh, thanks for watching and make sure that you watch also uh, the other video about the literacy narrative.